This show's got a whole new style. You're going to want to check it out. I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to the new improved garden style. This show is about great ideas for growing, cooking, and designing your life. You see, it's the fundamentals of garden style. Let me show you. Now we're gonna begin with starting, seed starting that is. Then it's into the kitchen for a delicious chilled couscous salad. And later, I'll show you how to take a basic tablescape to the next level with items from your garden. So don't go away, because when we return, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to grow your own garden style. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to talk just a little bit about some gardening fundamentals. Some basic things you may want to have around if you bring home some plants from the nursery or if you want to start some of your own plants from seed. Let's start with containers. I can never have enough just basic, classic terracotta pots. The problem is you do break them, but I also try to keep as many saucers around as possible. So when I bring plants home from the garden center, I immediately have a home for them. Or if I'm starting those little babies, I can upgrade them to a larger home. You need a good soil for container gardening, one that is specifically blended for growing things in containers. Make sure you have an all-purpose organic fertilizer. That's the best for the plants in my opinion. And I always like to have some sort of safe control because hey, you're gonna have problems with pests and diseases, let's just face it, so be ready. Now I realize there's a certain fear factor in taking some tiny little inert object called a seed and growing it into a full grown adult plant. But you know what? There's some things that can make that a lot easier and make your effort more successful. And that's one of these seed starting kits. And I just want to show you how this works. You see, it comes in a tray like this with these little pellets. And these little pellets are uh, wrapped with a, a biodegradable coating. But inside is packed, pressed peat moss. And when you add water, what happens is these actually expand. And I've just uh, I've added water to these and just within a few minutes they, they stand up to about an inch high. There's a little place right here in the top where you can actually uh, place the seed. So you see it makes it very easy and very precise. You just simply place two or three seed, depending on the size seed in each one of these places, and then get it nestled down back into this and you're set to grow. Now what comes with this are two things that help simulate nature. One is you get this heating pad below. And what this does is keeps the soil temperature slightly raised. You see seed love that temperature zone between about 70 degrees and 85 degrees. And then for the top, you just place this over and this creates an atmosphere of high humidity, which many seed really like. So the thing you wanna remember is not to place this in direct sunlight because it can get really too hot in here. Indirect light or grow light is perfect. So you may ask yourself, why would I want to start my own seed? Well, it doesn't take as long as you think. I mean, look at this. This kit makes it really simple. The other thing is that you can grow things that you might not be able to find at the garden center, maybe specific kinds of peppers or eggplant or some of those heirloom tomatoes. And the other thing is that you can cut the cost on what you're spending on plants by growing some of them from seed. A packet of seed like this costs about a buck and a half. So you just do the math. Okay, we're gonna to have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're gonna take a look at some crucial ingredients for a garden style kitchen. And then I'm gonna show you some delicious ways to put those together. So don't go away. Hey, if you love to cook, you know that a well-stocked kitchen is a convenient kitchen. 
You know, what I like to do is have some basic fundamentals, some essentials at hand all the time. So when I bring in things fresh from the garden or from the farmer's market, I can integrate them into some of these basic things. Let me just go through a few of them with you. When I cook, I love to have organic vegetable stock or chicken stock. Also dried beans. I love lentils, some canned tomatoes on hand, as well as roasted red peppers. And then, of course, pasta, little angel hair pasta, a little spaghetti, and then couscous. Easy to make. Also, I like to have some olives, peppercorns, of course, and sea salt. I love sea salt. And olive oil. You need a good olive oil for salad dressings. You can have a basic olive oil for cooking. And oh yeah, you want to make sure you have some good vinegar around. Again, I love to make my own salad dressings. Now let's take a look at the refrigerator. So you can see I've got a few things set out here. Of course, we have our own eggs here at the farm, so you always need to keep some eggs. But I also like to have some cheese in the way of aged cheese. It could be Parmesan or Asiago. I really like Asiago. And also some goat cheese, great for salads and things like that. Yogurt, also some whipping cream, and then soy milk some real butter, yep, real butter, and a pre-made pie crust. If you gotta throw a pie together in a hurry, having these around, it's really handy. All these things have a much longer shelf life than you might expect. Now, speaking of long shelf life, let's take a look at the freezer. You know, I love to keep fresh berries on hand that are frozen because you can make things very quickly with them. Of course, I like to keep some sorbet. It's handy for desserts. And also, if I find meat on sale, it's a really good price. I'll keep it in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. And then, of course, there are a few basic things from produce and the bakery in the way of some lemons and limes and a loaf of fresh bread. When it comes to spices or flavorings, well, you know, just look at my spice drawer. I have lots of things, but you really need some cayenne pepper, I think some onion powder, some cinnamon, certainly, and also honey. It's great to have around. Of course, you're going to have some of the fundamentals in the way of cooking oil, flour, and sugar. But these other things, when you've got them on hand, you're bringing some fresh things in from the garden, or like I said, the farmer's market, there's so many combinations you can come up with. In fact, let me show you one of them. Now, I want to share with you a really simple recipe for couscous salad. Couscous is considered a Moroccan pasta. It's really easy to work with. And there are three different components of this recipe. One is just getting the couscous ready, the other is doing a dressing, and then folding in some fresh ingredients. Let's start with the couscous. You see, you just need a large bowl, and uh, you need some way to cover it. What I'm taking here is two cups of couscous dried, and then I'm just taking a cup and three quarters of boiling water, and then all you do is place a lid on it like that and just let it sit. How easy is that? So let's start with the dressing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna begin with uh, one lemon. You want the juice of one lemon. That's one of our basic ingredients. Here's the other half. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is just pour this into the bowl. Don't want any of the seeds. If we can help it, a little pulp doesn't matter. And I'm gonna take one third cup of olive oil, one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, and one tablespoon of water. Then I've taken one clove of garlic and minced it finely. A half a teaspoon of Cavender's All Greek seasoning. And then just a little pepper and salt to taste. And there you have it. There's the dressing. Looks really nice, doesn't it? Okay, now, the couscous only takes 10 minutes. So if we look in here, you can see it's already absorbed that water. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? So now all we have to do is bring the couscous over and assemble our other ingredients. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take the couscous and just break it up just a bit. You can see how light and fluffy this is. It smells really good, lovely aroma to it. Now we're ready to add some of our fresh things from the garden. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a fourth a cup of dill and a fourth a cup of mint leaves, coarsely chopped. You always should have mint growing in your garden. It's so easy to grow. A third of a cup of um, green onions. A half a cup of flat leaf Italian parsley. Again, you can add more if you like. 
three quarters cup of goat cheese in crumbled form and two cups of tomatoes that have been um, halved and quartered. Little tiny tomatoes. The smaller tomatoes can be have larger ones you'll want to quarter them. Look at that, how beautiful it is. And you just take the dressing and simply pour it over. Salad, and fold that together. And you have created a very delicious dish here. You can go lots of directions with this, uh, adding other ingredients if you like smoked roasted red peppers, pine nuts, that sort of thing. Now all you need are guests, and this will feed, well, six to eight of them. Be sure to stay with us because we have more on Garden Style coming up right after the break. Welcome back. You know, when we talk about design, it's difficult to encapsulate all of sort of the essentials of design in one show. So what I want to focus on now really is how one can facilitate design in the house. Some of the elements that I keep at hand that allow me to very easily pull things together like a table setting or prepare a gift for someone, that sort of thing. So let's just start with some of the elements that I have in this room, but I call it the mud room, so it has multiple purposes. What I have here, for instance, is an old chest of drawers from the 1830s. It has wood knobs on it. It's a great storage piece. And what I did is I designed this shelf to go on top of it, and I just painted it the same color as the walls. And here I keep a lot of floral supplies and things for setting tables. For instance, on the top shelf, you'll see all kinds of frogs for doing flower arrangements and bouquets and so forth. Here I've got a lot of glassware and votives for setting the table. And then here's a whole array of glass vases. And over here on the other side of the room, you can see a shelf unit with all kinds of vessels and objects. If you'll notice that there's a color theme going on here, there are grays and browns and lots of greens and so forth. Sort out what really works in your house. Get rid of the things that don't and just build on those color themes that seem to work in lots of different rooms. Now let's focus on this chest for just a minute because this has worked out really well for me to store some of the essential materials that I like to have in this workspace. For instance, in this top drawer, I focus mainly on floral supplies. Essential things that you need like floral foam, uh, raffia, rubber bands, I have a hot glue gun in here, as well as clippers, uh, there's floral tape, anything I might need to make a bouquet. In this next shelf, you can see I have all kinds of ribbons, there's twine, there's paper. It's nice to have natural jute around for wrapping gifts. I even use it like on setting tables and things like that. There's tape in here, Velcro, a small hammer, a case of nails and screws for hanging things and using things, also glue, and plenty of votives. So you can see a chest of drawers like this can come in really handy in limited space. I mean, this thing is less than four feet wide and only about 24 inches deep. And if you add the shelf on top, hey, it's really essential. So why don't I take some of the elements out of this room and throw a tablescape together and show you what I mean. Now let's talk about another fundamental that's so important when it comes to designing, well, a tablescape, and that is my basic ironstone dinnerware. You can see here I've got the dinner plate and a salad plate. I mean, how much more basic can you get than this? As you can see here, I've set a table that's basically a monochromatic color scheme. You can see that I'm using these natural placemats. I'm using these glass flower vases that are in a wicker basket. For the napkins themselves, well, these are just kitchen tea towels. They come in very handy. And I've just used basic flatware. And oh yeah, the flowers. These are Alstromerias or Peruvian lilies. This white really works with the color scheme I have going on here. But the great thing about these is they last a long time. Okay, now let's take a look at bumping this up. And what I mean by that is let's keep it natural, but let's add color and make it more abundant. Well, here you have it. This is a much more colorful and abundant version, but using some of those basic things. You can see here, 
With the dinnerware, I have my ironstone dinner plate, but for the salad plate, I'm actually using some of these ceramic plates made by a local potter. We've gone from something that was, well, very monochromatic, white, to orange and gold themed. So you see I have a linen placemat and linen napkins. I used three vases just as I did before. The vase has a swirl pattern on it that you can see echoed in some of these plates. This is a Soloisia that was cut out of the garden or coxcomb. This is a beautiful coral color that I think fits nicely with our color theme. And then in between to connect these, what I've done is I've taken some gourds and apples uh, that help bring in the golden color of the napkins and the salad plates and then bumping up the color just a little bit by using some of those gala apples. And of course, a few votive candles never hurt, it really sets a nice ambience. By having a few of these basics around, you can use some of the things that you already have, and you can add a touch of nature to your life. Welcome back to the show. You know, I enjoy receiving questions from you, the viewer, about things that are going on in your garden. Today, Yoli asked me a very specific question that I'm asked a lot. It's a fundamental question. It's all about whether plants perform better in plastic pots versus the old-fashioned terracotta pots. Well, I have to believe that if you can keep the terracotta plant watered and don't allow the soil to dry out, that the terracotta pot is actually superior. Plastic pots work very well. Obviously, the nursery industry grows millions and millions of plants every year in them. But from an aesthetic standpoint, if I'm growing plants, I tend to like natural materials. What's great about terracotta, it's porous, and the roots of the plant can actually breathe, which is really good for the plant. But again, it's all about keeping that soil consistently moist, so don't forget. Well, Yoli, I hope that's helpful to you, and good luck with your plants. Okay, we have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Garden Style. We have a lot more fun in store as the season unfolds, and I hope it'll inspire you to grow, cook, and design your world. For Garden Style, I'm Alan Smith.